Welcome back. Uh, this is part three uh, of the Hooligan mod, and this is the rear wheel buildup. All right, so I've already told you how to, or that you're supposed to rebearing uh, the DRZ, the GS500 wheels with DRZ sized bearings. So uh, once you do that for the front, it's the same process for the rear. You're going to want to knock out the bearings on either side, take out your internal spacer, and then what you're going to want to do is put in your new bearing part number up here somewhere. I don't know. Once you do that, you're going to want to flip it over. You'll have your cush hub in the way. Take your custom cut spacer part number up here again. Place it in there and the same process for the spacer on the other side or on the on the front wheel. You just measure how long the other one is. Do your measurement on your new one, make the cut, plop her in. And then what you're going to want to do is put in uh, your other bearing, same part number as the other side. Once you're done with that, the cush hub is what goes on next. And so there's a couple things that come with the cush hub uh, that if you buy, because I was not aware that uh, there were cush hub pads and a spacer and, and all kinds of other things for it. So whenever you buy your, your rim, you're going to want to get your cush hub, which is doesn't include the sprocket just this guy right here a sp cush hub spacer i made this one because i didn't feel like waiting on one and then five cush hub pads and those are super simple getting them out is harder than getting them in Let's see if i can get it out real quick and show you All right, it's super simple. All it is is this little pad, so make sure the pads that you order are in uh, good shape. No cracks, all the nubs are there, uh, you know, because this is what takes out a lot, of pre or a lot of the vibration as you're going down the road. All right, so as you can see, there's a little nub right there, a little nub right there. All you're gonna do is place that nub in there and push down, and it's gonna kind of click in there. So once you do that, the only thing left to do is put your cush hub spacer or your uh, yeah your little cush hub to to uh, I don't know what the heck wheel spacer in there so I guess you don't get it confused so cush hub to wheel spacer in and the next thing you're gonna do is start working on your cush hub first thing you're gonna want to do probably uh, is knock out this bearing and replace it with whatever the part number is up here, wherever, I don't know. I'll figure that out later in the editing. Uh, and so then you're going to replace it with this big guy. Make sure you want it sealed, which is nice. Uh, once you do that, you're going to flip it over, and you're going to take out these bolts. And usually these are on the inside. Usually these are in here, and these nuts are on the outside. So you're going to take those off, and once you do that, you're going to, these are going to come, see how these have two flat sides. Usually they just have this one flat side over here. You're going to take uh, whatever size uh, ratchet, or not ratchet, wrench that you like. I have these uh, all set for 15 mil wrench and slide it on there. And what you're going to do is take an angle grinder and just kind of grind down one side. And all you're doing there is you just grind it down and slowly test fit, you know, your, your 15 or your whatever size uh, wrench that you have until it fits. And then you're going to do that for all those bolts. Next thing you're going to do, and I found that this is, for me, was uh, how I was going to have to do it because whenever I put it together, these sit up a little bit higher because there's a lip that the flat side, the original flat side caught on so it wouldn't spin. So, and as you can see here, they have these little indents and those were pressing down in there and pushing my cush hub up about one eighth uh, to about one quarter uh, 
of an inch or so. So what I did was I took a little Dremel and Dremeled all those little ridges out so then these would sit down a lot farther. And they're all just about perfectly flat with the, uh, the, the top of this. And they all sit about a mil or so. Make sure that you, whenever you put these in, you lock tight them and, and snug them down real tight. So, obviously, before you can put it on, you want to put your sprocket on, slip your bolts through, put your nuts on, make sure you lock tight them, snug them all down together, and that's your rear uh, build up. This sprocket is the uh, 39 tooth 520 pitch uh, GS500 pattern sprocket, part number up here again. All right, once you do that, make sure your spacer's in the middle there. Line this up, it doesn't go on any specific way. Just make sure you get it on and seated nice and neatly. All right, for this side, you're done. For the rear, however, uh, I went ahead and went with the GS500 rear rotor that came, or I had already bought one, uh, but a, a GS500 pattern rotor. And what I did was, uh, because you're running uh, the, the 240 RM caliper carrier, and this is a 250 dish, you got to get this cut down 10 mils from a 250 to a 240. So take it to a local machine shop that can do it, or a brake shop that can, that can turn it down the 10 mils. What I also found is that you're going to need to countersink these bolts. These aren't countersunk. These are, I didn't have a countersink. I just drilled the holes a little bit bigger. And so that they sat down until I had enough clearance. But you're going to want to count. The proper way to do it is to countersink these holes uh, for your for your bolts. Once you do that, bolt it all together. And that is all done. So the next step is, we're going to put this out of the way first, is to work on the rear. And what you're going to want to do is, obviously, you got to get your, yourself a new chain. So get yourself a new chain and make sure you route it correctly. I'm not going to take this one off because this is the, the new one I already have on here. And make sure you get it nice and lubed up, or it should come pre-lubed, hopefully. Uh, make sure you get it uh, put together correctly and lined up and run through your rollers correctly because if not, it'll chew up a roller. Uh, anyways, the next critical thing you need to do is swap out your, R, your DRZ, stock DRZ 400S. Uh, caliper carrier which is just this guy and this is your caliper obviously and all it's hold on by is like a bolt and then a floating pin so undo that bolt and then it should just pull off your, your stock caliper or your stock carrier and then what you're going to want to do is put it on here and it's a floating carrier so just get it all lined up it's super simple to do and then you just kind of put it in here but another thing I did uh, I was having some rotor drag uh, a lot of it, especially uh, in a certain point on the rotor for some reason, where it was dragging kind of in here and up here. And I wasn't 100% sure where it was kind of dragging at. So I just took a Dremel and just Dremeled kind of all of this out. And now it has no rotor drag at all. So, yeah, that's uh, an optional thing. You might have to, if you have a lot of rotor drag or uh, like a, a spot on your rotor and I don't know why maybe uh, the bolt wasn't uh, sunk down enough or they weren't all even I'm not for sure what caused it but uh, for sure like like I said for some reason I had some kind of rotor drag anyways uh, this is optional optional if you have some kind of rotor drag don't freak out uh, just kind of grind that down a bit unless it's super 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 tight if you have a little bit of rotor drag like you can hear it kind of it's it's probably dragging on the pads uh, so don't worry about that anyways next thing you do is once you get that bolted to that and your optional grinding is to put it on like that pretty simple it's that little guy just slides right onto there you don't have to disconnect any of your brakes your brake lines so you don't have to bleed them uh, I need to change my fluid because it's absolutely disgusting, but that's for a later video or just for me doing. So anyways, once you get all this done, you're ready to throw your wheel on. Alright, so 
you got your wheel here and I have it on backwards but you got to know what size spacers that you need I took a measurement from here to here from swing arm to swing arm how thick that was and then the inside cavities to or the, the the lip of the bearing to the face and then the lip of the bearing to the push-up lip what I then did was and this is how you're not going to mar up your rims like you see mine are all marred up and and nasty that's uh, because I had chipped my paint that I had painted it because I was trying to leave this on and then slide it between this and this and it does not work very well so the easiest way to do it is to kind of pull this off and slide it around slide the rim around and I'm gonna have to get a little closer anyways once you do that keep that kind of in there with it and slide it all in there together and then the easiest way to get it to hold on is to just put your chain on and there it'll sit down in there all right so once I was here I found out uh, through sources that the most important measurement on here or the most important alignment uh, thing alignment characteristic on the rear wheel is the chain side you want that chain to be completely straight because obviously it's a chain it can't handle a lot of variation so if you're off uh, it's not going to be good for the chain it's going to put undue uh, wear and tear on your chain and sprockets and then could do other kind of damage to your wheel and or anything else so uh, I got it perfectly straight uh, usually I put the axle in and then did all kinds of little measurements. So I knew the inside lip was about uh, six and a half. And then I knew that's about a, there's a gap there of about uh, half a mil to a mil. So I came out to roughly, if I can find them, about seven mils or so that I was going to need. So I use these tri-alloy spacers try alloy uh, washers and they actually work really well and they're about three mils three and a half mils thick I believe I picked them up at Ace uh, they weren't too expensive but they work really really well uh, for this side the inside cavity since this is a I'll go back here for a second since this is a floating uh, rear like it it, it it can handle for variation because it can float on the on the pins. Uh, I figured out that this side was not going to be as critical. So I did measure, and it was about 20 mils from there to the inside of there. So what I did was I realized that the stock S spacer is about 17 millimeters, and these are about 3 millimeters. So put them together like that. This side toward the bearing, this side towards the carrier and that's exactly what I needed and it's worked out for the last 500 miles bearings look fine so that's what I use for that instead of actually cutting uh, one inch pipe spacers so we're going to go ahead and start putting it all together because now that you have your spacers and you can cut your own spacers if you want I found this was a much easier route so just slide those in there and then just slide it up like that. Take your axle and just slide it through until it gets to almost the other side. You don't want it to pop out because you're going to have to kind of slide your spacers in there. And it's easiest to kind of do one on the side or one below or just kind of wherever you got a gap. And it's going to be really tight fit getting in there. And it'll snug up uh, the extra half mil that I need uh, whenever I tighten it. So once I do that, then you got to make sure everything's all lined up. Slide your axle on through. And then once you tighten it up, those actually really hold nice and tight to the inside guard there uh, for a nice little fitment. So that's your rear buildup. It's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, doesn't take too long to do. It just takes kind of preparation, getting all 
the correct parts in line and everything. So, Ugh. last thing you got to do, obviously, is tighten it up. I'm not going to show that because that's kind of a uh, a thing you can either find online or you already know how to do. So, that's part three of the DRZ Hooligan mod, and you're done. All you got to do is tighten it up, put some Loctite on it, and go ride. Have a good one, guys.